Hey everybody, Obersports here. Um, welcome to the Monday After. This is just a web series where I'll be recapping the Packers game more in depth the, game, the day after it happens. So, um, yesterday was a very entertaining and exciting game, and definitely a game that I did not expect to go that way. Now, I really expected the Packers to come out and beat the Bengals fairly, fairly easily. It's we had just come up off a loss to Atlanta. We were at home. Uh, we were playing an inferior opponent. It just it was a kind of game that the Packers usually win 35-13 to 13 or something like that. An easy win for the Packers, and that's what I expected. But right out of the gates, the Bengals scored the first touchdown of the game in the opening drive, which was their first touchdown of the year. Uh, and the Packers answered right back after a questionable pass interference call and then a one-yard touchdown pass from Aaron Rodgers to Lance Kendricks after an Adams fumble was called back. And there was no controversy in that fumble, by the way, that he was clearly down. They just made a bad call, which they ended up reversing. So the Packers got a crucial stop on the next Bengals series after sacking Dalton at midfield, but we got some pretty crappy field position, and we had to punt it away. And the Bengals ended up scoring another touchdown um, on Dalton pass to Joe Mixon, I believe. Um, so the next Packers drive, the Packers um, were driving down the field, were looking ready to tie the game once again, and... Right when we're in Bengals territory, one of the most surprising things happened in the game. Aaron Rodgers threw a pick six, which is the first time he's done that since 2009. Uh, so that wiped away a great drive. The Packers were down 21 to seven heading into the second half. They were failed to answer on the ensuing drive after the pick six. Rodgers was harassed all game long. He was under duress. He had five. He was sacked five times in the first half and six overall in the game. And the first half was really just some of the poorest football we've seen Green Bay play all year, and that's saying a lot because last last game, first uh, first uh, half was pretty terrible too, and so was the first half of the Seahawks game. We have mustered only 14 first half points all all year long, and that's really got to be something that changes for the Packers, regardless of whether we win this game or not. It, we did not look good in the first half, and we really need to address those issues that we have. Uh, but the second half, completely different story for both teams. The Packers came out firing on all cylinders. They came out with a touchdown drive on the opening possession. And right after that, they got a huge third and 12 stop on the ensuing Bengals drive. But the Packers weren't able to do anything with that. Uh, and Packers, they were, they kind of hung around. It was 21 to 14. The Packers defense kept making big stops. Uh, the Packers cut it to 21-17 to on a drive that went deep into Bengals territory, one that I really hoped the Packers would have been able to score on, but they were only able to muster a field goal on that. So, in my opinion, the biggest play in regulation by the Packers defense came on a third and one inside the Packers 30 with 4.29 to go when Joe Mixon fell down and was stuffed by the Green Bay defense, which forced a field goal and gave the Packers plenty of time to tie. And... This was coming out, I mean, when I saw the Bengals, they were running the ball right up the gut that drive. They, it was mixing for six, mixing for another six, mixing for nine, mixing for another six. It was, they just kept gashing us, and we couldn't do anything about it. And that's not a situation you want to be in if you're the Packers, because you need time to give Aaron Rodgers the football back. And that third and one, Joe Mixon fell down before, I, who knows what, if he would have gotten that first down. If he hadn't fell down, he very well could have gotten that first down, and the Packers probably wouldn't have won the game. So a little bit of luck had to be involved. Mixon, due to poor the poor turf, the poor footing he got, uh, he fell down. The Packers were able to stop him and force him to kick a field goal, which gave them 346 and a lot of oh, um, 20, 80 yards for Aaron Rodgers to go in the final 346 of the game. Um, so Aaron Rodgers... Uh, drives him down all the way down the field, makes some some of the most incredible throws I've seen him make. He, he two times he he danced around the pocket and threw off his back foot to a guy who had to take make a uh, toe tap catch uh, once to Nelson and once to Allison. And they were they, he really made a lot of great plays on that last drive. And people were gonna tell me, oh, but it was only against a a, a terrible Bengals team. And I what I have to say to that is. It doesn't matter who Aaron Rodgers does this against. It's still an NFL team, and they were still impressive throws. Um, so he finds Nelson for the tying touchdown with 17 seconds to go. He kicked the extra point. We had to overtime. 
and the coin flip, the Bengals win the coin flip. So at that moment I was thinking, here we go again, the Packers are going to lose in overtime, and because the other team gets the ball first and they score a touchdown and Aaron Rodgers doesn't see the field. That seems to be the general formula that happens when the Packers play uh, in a, any overtime game. And Rodgers has never won an overtime game up until this game. So the Bengals, um, they come out and the Packers get a stop, surprisingly. And my, I thought the Bengals were going to march right down the field because the Packers, even though they had the momentum, they were. I felt like their defense was a little bit gassed, that they had gotten too many stops early in the in the second half. And I thought they were gonna. This was gonna be the drive where they crumbled, but they didn't. They got the huge stop thanks in large part to Josh Jones, who made a great play on the Bengals' tight end to stop him on third and six and force a punt. Uh, Packers ensuing drive, two incomplete passes to start the drive. It was a third and ten. I was thinking to myself, you, we're really gonna go three and out here, and we all knew what was gonna happen. The Packers didn't have good field position. We were gonna if we didn't get that huge play. The Packers punt the football, the Bengals get in good field position, they march down, they get a field goal, and they win. That's what would have happened. I, I'm almost 100% sure that that's what would have happened. But Aaron Rodgers baited him off sides. He got them to jump on the hard count, and he found Allison wide open. And Allison made a few moves, and at the end of the play, it was a 72-yard gain, and the Packers were down at the Bengals' six. So uh, the Packers kicked the get winning field goal. And they won 27 to 24 in overtime, and it was just a terrific game to watch. It really was. And the Packers usually, usually though, you know they'll make it a game when they're down like 14 or so. But to see them come back and win a game like that is really, really, it's really, it's not really something that I've wanted to see the Packers do for a while. And by no means was this a perfect game for the Packers at all. The Packers had a lot of things go wrong for them. They did a lot of things wrong. And they have a lot of things that they need to correct for uh, this coming game against the Bears. But it was a win. And the Bengals are not as bad of a team as a lot of people think. Uh, lots of people are dismiss dismissing this victory as it came against a winless team. But the Bengals are talented. They were fired up. They needed a win. And that comeback was absolutely impressive. And it's a, it was a much-needed confidence booster for the Packers. And... I mean, think about the Packers, Packers' circumstances at the end of the first half. You're out guys like Daniels, you're out your two starting tackles, you're out Cobb, you're out Perry, you're out House. We, we didn't have anybody. And Rodgers was with a makeshift offensive line. We were down 14. It, it looked like a, the Packers were just going to crumble. I thought the Packers might have made it, might, might make it a game, they might not, but there was no way the Packers were going to win. But they proved me wrong, they proved a lot of people wrong. And Aaron Rodgers got his first overtime victory, and he beat the Bengals for the first time in his career. And it's going to go down as one of the, even though some people might not think that it was a big deal, this game is going to go down as one of Aaron Rodgers' defining moments in his career, especially if this win is something that boosts the Packers on a big lawn winning streak or something like that. So, I mean, it was a win, and I'm happy about it. Did I think it was going to be close? No. But... That's the beauty of football, any given Sunday, right? Um, so, looking ahead, we've got the Bears on Thursday. Another game that you'd think, well, this is going to be easy. It's going to be at home against an inferior opponent. But the Bears, they just beat uh, they just beat the Pittsburgh Steelers at home. At home and the, bank, the Bears have looked better at home this year. But they still beat the Pittsburgh Steelers. They gave the Falcons a really good game. This Bears game is not going to be easy. It's against your... Your uh, most, your biggest rival, your oldest rival. The Packers need to come ready to play this time, and they need to have a good first half this time out because you can't keep coming down from these deficits. As as much as amazing as that win was yesterday, the Packers really need to focus on winning and getting out to a fast start because if they don't, we're gonna we might find ourselves in another 14 point deficit, and we don't want that. So. We need to come out and we need to play aggressively. We need to play like we did in the second half of the of the game yesterday. And I think the Packers will get a pretty easy victory. But we have to make sure that it's not going to that we're not going to fall behind early because that's the only spells trouble. This game for the Packers, it's not something that happens very happens very often. They don't usually come back from deficits like that. And we don't want to have to rely on doing things like that the whole season. So 
Um, expect my next episode of the Monday after, or rather the Friday after, to come out next Friday after the Thursday night football game. Um, it should be a good game. I expect the Packers to win fairly easily, but it's the Bears. They're, all, they're always up to give us a good game on occasion because they're our biggest rival and we can't take them lightly. So, anyways, guys, that's all I wrap this thing this video. I hope you liked it. Um, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next Friday.